Today we are interviewing Ms. Joan Carrot, a longtime member of St. Joseph's Episcopal Church in Queens Village. We hope this interview will shed some light on the history of this wonderful parish since she first attended. Good morning, Ms. Carrot. How are you today? Good morning, Triona. I am very well, thank God. Well, Ms. Carrot, where were you born? I was born in New York City and I grew up in Harlem. Okay. Yes. And where were you living before you came to St. Joseph's? Well, um, when I first got married, we lived in the Bronx, my husband and I, and our children were about uh, four and one when we bought our home in Queens. Ooh. And what made you attend St. Joseph's? That's an interesting question. Uh, we, we moved to Queens Village in um, 1963. Ooh. That was a long time ago. <laughs> and um, I didn't choose a church to go to for a couple of years. My kids were small. So when I was ready to begin attending church, I visited all the churches in the area. I visited St. Alban the Martyr. I visited uh, St. Gabriel's on uh, uh, Jamaica Avenue. And um, I visited St. Joseph's. And what was it out of all those churches that said St. Joseph's was the one? Very interesting. Uh, at the time, the rector of the church was uh, Father Penny. Father Penny um, uh, met with me, greeted me that first Sunday that I came. And um, he came to visit the family that same week. Oh. That made a big difference. That was not done before. So um, he came to meet my husband and saw our children. And um, the next thing that impressed me is the next time I came to the church, he, knew, he remembered my name and uh, that made an impression on me. Oh, and what was it back then? What was it like, the environment, the mm -hmm. congregation? Well, the congregation at that time, at, at that time, this community was transitioning from a, a white community to um, black people were moving in and the white people were moving out. Um, but for a while, you know, our church was integrated for that first year, um, one of the uh, ladies who was involved with the Sunday school um, even offered to come and pick me up um, with my children to bring me to church. So um, that was another good impression that there was friendliness there in, in spite of the different cultures, you know. Um, the next thing that uh, interested me was that um, the people were friendly and I was invited to be a part of the um, the group that uh, what, what um, Mr. Uh, Clovel does, you know, downstairs to be on that. And um, I met uh, Mrs. Hall invited me to be on her committee. They would take turns, you know, uh, providing you know, refreshments after the service. Oh, so you're part of the hospitality Yes, team. that's okay. that's the word I couldn't remember, the hospitality committee. So as a result of meeting Mrs. Hall, I, uh, I met a lady that became one of my best friends here, which was Mrs. Harry Arrington. Uh, I also met uh, the um, the head of the school, the Sunday school, <coughs> was Alga Morgan, and she invited me to be a teacher. So um, that was how I get started. I was, you know, people reached out to me, and um, I started bringing my kids to Sunday school, and um, I got involved with the Sunday school. And um, let me see, since that was uh, 50 years ago, I actually joined the church in 1965, oh. so that's 50 years ago. I was a very young mother then, 33 years old. So and, it was mm. one, um, when I was at the congregation, some people said that you were among one of the first families 
here yes. in St. Joseph that would sit in the front of the church and with the children. Mm -hmm. How was right. that a feeling? How, how did that make you, know, make you feel? Um, you mean being, being the first? Yeah. I, I guess I wasn't really looking at myself as being the first, you know. I, we were welcomed into the church and I, I didn't look at myself as being the first, but um, I, it didn't take me any time to get involved in the parish work, you know, especially um, teaching Sunday school. And eventually, um, I had taught Sunday school many years before when I was growing up in Harlem. As a teenager, I was a Sunday school teacher. And um, uh, let's see what I was trying. Oh, at that time, I taught a range of classes, you know, from small to um, high school age. My sister and I were the main teachers. And we were just teenagers ourselves, you know. But uh, when we came to Queens, when I came to St. Joseph's, I, my uh, teaching was uh, geared more towards the junior high and the high school. So for many years, I eventually became involved with both of those groups teaching Sunday school. And you said when you first came, Mr. Penny was the uh, uh, father, father Penny. Penny. Father Penny. He was here, and, and I came in 1965, so Father Penny was here for about a year, and then he was appointed to be the Archdeacon of Queens. So then we um, had to get a new priest, and the new priest that we got, who stayed here from 1966 to 1986, was Father Bourne, Father Paul Bourne. And, um, it was a long time relationship, so I was, you know, growing, growing up myself, you know. I was only 33 when I first came here, and then when he left, I was 53. <laughs> <laughs> After Father Born left, um, I feel that I had uh, some influence on um, Father Anthony coming here. What happened is uh, Harriet uh, Arrington used to take the group uh, uh, the youth choir, you know, she was for many years the youth choir leader. And we used to go to different nursing homes. We went to a nursing home in Brooklyn that was connected with the hospital there. And um, uh, Father Anthony was one of the uh, uh, chaplains there. And um, I mentioned to him that St. Joseph's was looking for a priest and would he consider, you know, because I had heard him preach once before and he was young and uh, I thought, you know, it would be a good thing to have someone like Father Anthony at our church. And sure enough, he went through all the processes of uh, interviewing. At that time, he had said he wasn't really looking for a parish because he loved working with the elderly at the hospital. But as it turns out, Father Anthony came, was chosen to be um, our uh, parish rector, and uh, was with us for another 32 years. And um, I, I, he remembers that I'm the one that um, mentioned it to him first about St. Joseph's looking for a priest. So I kind of take a little bit of credit <laughs> of that. Well, thank and, you. Uh, we had a great time yes. with Father Anthony, he was the canon, who now is canon oh. Lloyd Anthony, yeah, so. So you've been in St. Joseph's for a long time. What are some of the memories that you, that you appreciate and some of the sad memories that you, you gained mm -hmm. to you when you came? The sad memories, well, the, the, the most sad thing is losing, um, friends, you know, that you become close to. And, uh, and as I get older, you know, I'm losing more and more of my friends. And uh, so, um, particularly in recent years, you know, um, I guess I need to talk a little about the relationship between myself and Harriet Arrington. 
uh, her children were growing up the same time my children were growing up. Um, one of her sons is around the same age as my son. In fact, you know, our sons are in between the ages of her children. So we, we've been friends ever since uh, our kids were small. And we did a lot of things together. One, one of the things that we did together, um, well, Harriet was already, she had become a teacher while she was attending here. You know, both of us went back to school, actually, um, after our children were born. We went back and got our degrees, um, you know, while our kids were, um, while our kids were teenagers, you know. So, um, Harriet and I got very involved with the Sunday school. Uh, we eventually heard that there was going to be a uh, meeting or a display at the uh, diocese, at the cathedral. Um, and uh, we went to that together. And what was happening at that time was uh, they it was uh, bringing youth together from all over the island. So we got involved with that and eventually we got involved with um, the beginning of Teens Encounter Christ. Oh. So we were among the first to be involved with that. And we got our children here at St. Joseph's involved. And out of that came many leaders from uh, this Second church. 44. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Teens Encounter Christ, and then after Teens Encounter Christ, um, we saw a need to reach out to the Teens Encounter Christ, of course, is for the high school age group. And um, after we saw a need for the junior high group to have a group to come together, and we named that Agape, and I, I helped to put that weekend together. And after that, we um, saw a need to uh, reach out to the college age students. So as a result of that, and, and when I say we, we're talking about people in the diocese have now come together. That, that's a big difference from when I first came to St. Joseph's. We were just the family here at St. Joseph's. But once we got involved, uh, I think it, I would say 15 years later, because it was about 1979 when uh, Teens Encounter Christ actually started in 1980. So I was already at St. Joseph's being a Sunday school teacher um, for 15 years when we got involved in youth ministries uh, on a diocesan basis. So our kids got to know kids from all over the island and uh, they became kind of a family, you know. And it was an opportunity also for some of our kids to become leaders in that group, in Teens Encounter Christ. And um, uh, I think from the time that we, I joined the church to that time, that was the, a big revolution, you know, getting our young people involved on and um, as a result of that, Teens Encountering Christ, seeing the kids come into a relationship with Christ and, and um, having something in common with each other uh, by being involved in that. And uh, um, a group of the people that helped to get Teens Encounter Christ started was the Crisio community. And, um, that group uh, is still going on now, although Teens Encounter Christ is sort of disbanded in just the last couple of years. Um, I'm not sure why they are not keeping it going, but um, um, the, the whole Crisio movement is to keep people in a close relationship with Christ and to make it a way of life, you know. And, um, right. So coming to St. Joseph's and seeing the kids grow up and 
partake in some of the activities that you help put together, mm -hmm. do you feel that your career path or the reason that you came to St. Joe's and started helping kids, do you think it's fulfilled? Oh yes, because I've, I've seen such rewarding things happen among the kids who grew up in our Sunday school, you know. There have been so many success stories, you know. We have um, professionals that were just little kids here growing up and getting involved with tech and all of that. Now they are, well, you have one good example right here now, which is Luke a lot severe. Um, and we had, many years ago, we had um, Marcella David, who became a law professor. And um, there, there are a lot of success stories. So I, I look at it as God working in their life from the, um, what should I say, the basis that, that they got here at St. Joseph's. A lot of it. So, um, from St. Joseph's, obviously since you came, things have changed and stuff like that. What are some things that you could say that, you know, caught your attention or like to say that you would bring back if, if you can? Um, or something that was, that, that you were sad to see go or sad to see change mm -hmm. that other people would enjoy? Oh. That's a hard question. Um, <laughs> the thing that I remember so much about back when I was involved with youth um, is that uh, there was a lot of uh, community. Um, the, I think one of the, the, the problems that still exists existed back then uh, was that the parents weren't as involved. They kind of depended on the leaders, the the adult leaders to more or less do everything, you know. So um, I see that same problem now. I don't think the parents are as involved enough with what's going on with the youth. And um, I don't know if that's really changed much, you know. Um, trying to think. Uh, your question again was uh, what is the changes, right? Yeah. I don't know whether it's because I'm growing older now and so many years have passed by. I'm, and 50 years ago, if I came when I was 33, I am now 83 years old. So um, I remember us having a very large uh, youth group. I'm not sure what the size of the youth group is now. Of course, I was so involved um, then, but we had, you know, it was a large group, you know? We had, like, for instance, even with the Sunday school, each group, each age group had at least 10 kids in it. We had a very large Sunday school as well. So I think I see a change there, that there, um, the Sunday school is not as involved. I'm not sure whether it's because the, the parents are not cooperating as much with bringing the children, or our parish is getting older, so we don't have a lot of young children here, you know? <laughs> so when you see, you've been there when we've been on our youth trips and our youth ministries to go out and spread the word and we come back and speak to the church. Mm -hmm. Do you believe in the children are the future and they hold the faith of, our, of the path in their hands? Oh, um, yeah, I think it's very important for them to uh, grow up in the church and to uh, make um, their love of the Lord, sort of the focus of their lives, and to use that as a guide uh, for their future. And um, I'm always encouraged by uh, the youth who go on the uh, who go on the special weekends and um, come back and share with us. And uh, so many of our youth from St. Joseph had been leaders 
in the group, in the Teens Encounter Christ, in the Young Adult Retreats, um, and that's encouraging. And I just pray that um, the current youth will continue. To, I, I'm encouraged by the young people who are going off to college, and then when they come back, they come to church. Um, because in past years, um, well, as well as I think now, when the young people leave high school and go off to college, it's, it's a while before they come back to church. Sometimes it is until they start having their own children, you know. But um, I'm encouraged that uh, the leadership will continue on, you know, when I speak to people like you. You know, I, I see you as a leader, and uh, hey, you see, mm -hmm. Joseph has taught me a lot mm -hmm. in what I want to do, what I want to be, and how how to get there. Mm -hmm. So, in our last question, what do you have advice you have for girls like me and young mothers, or mm -hmm. anybody who's coming into the church as young as you did? What mm -hmm. advice do you have to give them? Mm -hmm. I, I think your your faith has to take a strong part in, in your beliefs. You have to really believe what you learned is really true, you know, that Christ is the head of all, and to learn to depend on Him and to turn to Him for everything, and always to be involved with um, the growth in the church, with the young people, as you become young men and women, uh, that you would um, uh, encourage the, the youth, you know, to follow the path of Christ, to, to be involved with things of the church, um, with the good things, to lead a good moral life, you know. And um, I think that depends a lot on, on what you believe in. And, and uh, I think it's important for young people to uh, be involved with reading the Bible, you know, and um, so uh, you had asked about disappointments before. I think um, that the um, lack of commitment um, in, uh, in following, you know, uh, the teachings of the Bible, um, I, I think that may, you know, um, make a big difference in the success of the church. And uh, what else do I see for you? I, I, I'm encouraged by, by the youth who um, go on to college and then come back to the church. And I, I think um, Luke Elah is a very good example and uh, his sister Rebecca as well. You know? And I'm expecting to see that in you as well. You know? You're getting ready to go off to college. And um, I think that um, we'll hear more from you and see more from you. Yeah, I'm not going anywhere. I'm always here. Well, this is your family. Yes. I mean, uh, you know, um, some people have left the church uh, because of certain um, disappointments in the hierarchy um, and you know for instance um, uh, approving gay marriage and stuff like that. Um, I find it difficult to leave St. Joseph's because St. Joseph's is my family. I've been here 50 years so um, I think the main thing is to focus on your worship, on praising the Lord and, and worshiping Him, and no matter what um, the negative things are in the church, um, I think um, I, I love the support that St. Joseph's gives to those who are ill or um, who have lost loved ones. I think there's a great um, support group here. and. Uh, I just, at this time, I don't feel that I would ever give up my St. Joseph's Church family. That makes mm -hmm. too Well, thank you, Ms. Carrot, for, be, for consenting to be in this interview mm -hmm. and giving me this opportunity to get to know more about you and more of the history of my church. 
and my name is Shia Mamonas and thank you for watching. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for having me. You're it was a pleasure. Mm -hmm.